I'll try to give you uh, some, some food for thought before lunch. Um, so my name is Georges Baudouin. I'm the uh, chair of the Agnico uh, Eagle Eldorado Gold Quebec Research Chair in Mineral Exploration at uh, Université Laval in Quebec City. And I will uh, present the work that's been uh, done by a uh, MSc student, Guillaume Raymond, uh, <clears throat> on the uh, Ogmito Buza, where we've used stable isotopes of hydrogen ho oxygen to uh, model fluid flow and constrain gold endowment in that uh, deposit. So we'll go back to a smaller scale, that of the, um, the deposit scale. Um, so uh, I will uh, show you that using oxygen hydrogen isotopes, uh, we have uh, been able to map, and I think it's the first time this has been done, uh, the uh, mixing front uh, between the upwelling up auriferous fluids and the uh, uh, resident pore water fluid, upper crustal fluids, and that has been frozen um, in the uh, deposit. Uh, we've taken these results and uh, did the 3D advective dispersive modeling of solute transport in the discreetly fractured rock, which means in, which means in uh, plain language that we have a uh, porous matrix uh, which has uh, discreetly designed fractures to uh, represent the geological context and these are coupled matrix and fracture, both for solute and mass transport, and able to, to model then what's happening in the rock and in the veins as the output of the modeling. And so with this model, we found the conditions which reproduce best the uh, observation we have done in the Ogmito Buzan segment, segment. And then I will show you how these uh, fit within the larger context of the larger Lake Cadillac fault zone. I will uh, briefly complete by giving you uh, what's coming up for our group or part of our group um, during the next two years of the, uh, the uh, Metal Earth uh, program. So regional settings, so uh, Ogmito Buzan is uh, located here south of uh, uh, Rouen Arada. It's uh, along the uh, Larder Lake Cadillac break. Um, and uh, you have here a map. So that's a Georgie map. We have to the north of Blake River Group. Uh, Timiskaming sediments, Pontiac sediments, and a, the trace of the Lauder Lake Cadillac break is um, considered to be located in a panel, narrow panel, of ultramafic rocks of the Pichet group. Um, and the, the uh, mineralization or the, 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 the area of, of, of uh, study uh, includes several uh, mineralized ore shoots in Ogmito, Cinderella, Gamble. Uh, Astoria, and then to the uh, east, East Bay and Buzan are uh, virtually barren in, um, in gold mineralization. So uh, the uh, strategy for sampling that we uh, used is one where we had the, um, and the, it was selected for that, is because we have a very narrow, long section into which we have all the mineralization. And this is here, the gold grades in, 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 in increasing colors of red for higher gold grades. So you can see that it makes ore shoes which are uh, steeply dipping to the east. There are zones of barren or less mineralized rock. So we have samples within the ore shoots, outside of the ore shoots, and then we have samples towards the east. Most of these are shallower because they've not been drilling at a deeper depth, but in the uh, mineralized area, we have samples down to 700 meters. So uh, using this uh, sampling grid um, in a plane, which simplifies a lot the uh, interpretation of the uh, fluid flow afterwards, we've uh, looked at the uh, stabilized stove. This is all based on a careful study of the uh, parogenetic stages, where we can see that we have three stages of mineralization which are associated with uh, four types of veins, with three types of veins that are associated with the gold mineralization, with cross-cutting relationship with the uh, beige quartz, quartz tourmaline, uh, and then final calcite veins, which are uh, barren. So the, <coughs> the uh, oxygen isotope composition has been obtained from the uh, gold-related uh, veins. Um, so in addition to the isotope, we look at the mineralogy. And one of the interesting uh, aspects that we found is that in the mineralized segments, so we have them here in uh, warmer colors, whereas East Bay and Agmito uh, Buza in bluish tones, 
Uh, they are characterized by more delimitic composition going into uh, anchorite and mostly calcite in the, in the uh, Buzan area. So we have a change in the composition of the carbonates, and I will explain later why this is uh, important to mention that here. And likewise, the uh, tourmaline also displays a compositional variation from west to east. So this is the classification diagrams for tourmaline, but what you can see here is that the mineralized areas here in, in yellows and reds are <coughs> uh, richer in magnesium, whereas those in the uh, East Bay Buzan are um, enriched in iron relatively. So we have this change in composition that is found in the composition of carbonates and tourmaline. Now if we look at the uh, oxygen isotope composition and hydrogen isotope composition, uh, there are several diagrams. So this is the oxygen isotope composition. And as you, with the same color coding, so Ogmito, uh, excuse me, Ace Bay and Buzan in blue, the other ones in warmer shades. And what you can see is that the range in isotope composition in uh, the um, mineralized and less mineralized areas of the, uh, the, uh, the Ogmito Buzan sigma are non-distinguishable by the oxygen isotope composition strictly. And this is the oxygen isotope composition in tourmaline, where we can say the same thing. Here we have the delta D values in tourmaline, which also don't show any zonation. And here, uh, the, all the oxygen isotope values are coded by either below or above one gram uh, of gold per ton, which also shows no systematic difference in the oxygen isotope composition. So uh, I discussed that yesterday, but this is a, a recurring theme it, that, that the fluids are flowing, but something's happening that caused mineralization. So um, now if we want to use this data to understand the composition and the source of the fluids, we need to know uh, either the temperature formation and then calculate the composition of the water. So what we can see here is that the uh, samples plot uh, along isotherm, but we have a fairly wide range in temperature from uh, 250 to 450 uh, degrees. Uh, and these, however, being plotting along the isotherm shows that they are mostly in isotopic equilibrium, except for this sample here, for example. And this is not unlike what we find in the Valdor area, where we have this range in composition, uh, which also is at the uh, same temperatures, isotope equilibrium. And it just tells us that the range and values represent various composition in the system. Now, knowing the temperature of equilibrium, uh, we can calculate the composition of the water in, equili in equilibrium with uh, both quartz and tourmaline. So that's what we have here. So the composition of the water plots in the metamorphic water box, but a lot of the samples plot above it. And they plot above seawater composition. And the only way this can happen is either by boiling, and we think this boiling is a cause of the uh, opening, closing of the veins that uh, will uh, cause a depressurization and concurrent boiling, or it is by sericite and perhaps chloride uh, crystallization either in the veins or in the alteration selvages. But this is a trend that we find across the world in orogenic gold deposit um, <coughs> that we've studied. Um, so having, we have this composition of, of the water and uh, this uh, range in the water composition actually reflect mixing. It reflects mixing between two fluid reservoirs. Um, and the two fluid reservoirs in the Ogmito Buzan segment here are slightly different from those in the Valdor vein field. I will come back to that afterwards. Um, so we have diff slightly different metamorphic fluids with a high temperature above 450, a high delta 18O value of the water above 10, 12. <coughs> And we can see that the samples are plotting along a mixing line with something at a lower temperature, 200, 250, uh, and lower delta 18 O values, about four per mil. So this is what we call the upper crustal fluid. And with this, uh, this discussion earlier today, I think this is this water that we find still today, stuck in fractures and porosity within the Archean uh, craton, and which has a residence times that has been calculated in billions of years. Okay, so, and superposed on this are trajectories for various um, hypotheses for the amount of, of um, boiling that would happen. It does not change much of the oxygen isotope composition. It has a much stronger effect on the hydrogen isotope composition, as you will see in a second. So we have mixing between a high O18, low O18 fluids, two fluids of different temperature, but they also have different delta D values. 
So what you can see here, if we look at the delta D values for the fluid, uh, we see a mixing line between a higher, the higher temperature metamorphic fluid with a, uh, a value below minus 30, which is mixing most likely with something that was originally seawater, but has changed with time by boiling and reaction. And these are tra trajectories for the same boiling uh, hypothesis that are shown here. So the range in composition for the delta D values combines both the mixing of the two reservoir with the effect of boiling on the hydrogen isotope composition, which is much stronger than for the uh, oxygen isotope composition. Okay, so now if we look at the um, composition of the fluid that we've just calculated in the long section, and we use also the temperature, this is what we have. So, what you can see here in color is the delta 18 O values of the water that we've calculated in equilibrium with, uh, the, um, with the minerals. And what you have in lines are the isocontours of temperature for the temperature of equilibrium of the same samples. So what you can see is that we have a plume of high temperature, high temperature, I delta 18 O fluid, the metamorphic deep seated fluid that is coincident with or shoots at Agmito Cinderella and which is mixing or which is having a upper part which is cooler. And we can see the same thing in the Astoria area. We don't see it in Gamble because we only had one sample where we could calculate the oxygen isotope composition of water with a mineral pair. And as we go towards uh, East Bay and Busan, then we have lower temperature and no important infiltration of the deep seated metamorphic fluid. So we can see the isotherms are actually going up, 375, um, and same thing here. So we have this plume of hot fluid that seems to have come up from below, and then by mixing with the colder upper crustal fluid, it made these plumes of fluid going up. Now I'm coming back to this sample here at Lake, Lake Gamble because if we look at the vertical distribution of the temperatures of equilibrium, this is what we get. We get a good relationship between the high temperature, deeper samples towards uh, lower temperature, closer to surface samples, which are the range in mixing temperature between the different uh, system. The uh, temperature gradient that is calculated in this area is 30 degrees per 100 meter. So this is a very, very steep gradient where the higher temperature deep seated fluid is actually mixing with the resin water. And that is the progression of the mixing front that we have um, um, uh, found in the, um, in, the, uh, in the area. So I was showing you a sample before from the, uh, the uh, Gamble, the Lake Gamble. This is the sample here. So it is deeper, low temperature, and it is outside of one of the zones of high temperature upflow that we are able to see uh, within the Augmento uh, Buzan uh, segment. So this, uh, what creates this pattern, and what we did uh, next was to, um, um, was to uh, model the, um, the uh, fluid flow regime to reproduce what we have documented along the trace of the, um, the Ogmito Buzan uh, segment. So uh, the modeling uh, is done using hydrogeosphere. So hydrogeosphere is the uh, go-to numerical model right now for anything working with um, hydrogeology. Um, and uh, um, it has all the components to do uh, 3D dispersive advective flow and solute transport applied to mineral deposits because we can uh, actually um, simulate the uh, kinetics of the uh, reaction, rea the isotope exchange reactions using the uh, absorption features that are in the model. So we couple a porous media with discrete fractures, so they have to be modeled or in, uh, recreated in the, in the, uh, the, the model. Uh, we include oxygen isotope fractionation, fractionation and react, uh, rate of reaction. Um, now to uh, find some solutions that are close to what we, uh, we uh, measured in the field, 
we had to use specific uh, boundary layer characteristics. So the lower boundary layer of the model is permeable. That means that fluids can come from the old bottom surface of the model. And the upper permeable surface is impermeable except along the trace of the Larder Lake Kedzlak break. So the trace of the Larder Lake Kedzlak break is that black arrow, uh, uh, line here, which is the 70 meter thick pichet, which we looked at in cross section, long sec in long section, sorry, from the east to the west to the east. So uh, what you have to the north are rocks of the Blake River group, the Timiskaming group, and the Pichet within the Timiskaming in this part, and then sitting on, uh, in contact with the, uh, the Blake River in the uh, eastern part. And to the south, we have the uh, Pontiac sedimentary rocks. Each of these rock types has um, uh, hydrogeological parameters of, of, of porosity, permeability, etc. cetera. Uh, oxygenized slope composition. Um, and um, then we uh, have um, along the long section of the Pichet group, um, imposed a thermal gradient comparable to the thermal gradient that we have um, observed in the long section. So we have a more regular thermal gradient um, outside of the ore chutes and a stronger thermal gradient uh, where we have the ore chutes and we cannot make them at 70 degrees like in life, but that's close enough for, for us that we uh, can do. Um, and then um, we have the, uh, the, the area that has been uh, modeled. So what I will show you now is the results of the numerical modeling of fluid flow in parallel to the uh, map that we have. So you can see here there's a dotted line of, the, uh, of a thermal or a isotherm in this in the uh, Astoria area also. And what you can see is this same line in uh, white. So two things here in color is the oxygen isotope composition of the fluid. That is after 1,000 years of infiltration. And what you have in terms of little arrows are the uh, vectors of fluid advection uh, with a reference length here. So it's much smaller than 75 meters per year, as you can see. So what we have is that already by 1,000 years, the system is pretty much um, established in terms of forming a high temperature, high delta 18O plume, and by 10,000 years, it is forming almost a pattern that we wanted. But what we also see is that by 50, or 50 to 100,000 years, the old system becomes entirely um, at a steady state where all the permeability has been uh, invaded by the metamorphic fluid from below, and all the upper crustal fluid has been moved or diluted by this uh, upflow. And you can see that in the area of the East Bay Bouzon, we don't have this. It is much less infiltration of the deep-seated metamorphic uh, fluid. Um, so that's telling us that within about 10,000 years and less than 50,000 years, all the fluid that needed to flow in this area to form the gold deposit had happened. A very short term or short time span for mineralization. It's basically instantaneous in terms of geology. Um, what you have here are the fluid rock ratios. And uh, because the model has voxels of rock, uh, we know the amount of rock there is in each voxel. We know its oxygenized dope composition. And we also know how much fluid has flown through the voxel in mass. So we can actually calculate a true uh, molar ratio between the fluid and the rock, not estimated by the uh, uh, stabilized stoke composition. So we can see here ratios going from zero to 60. And we have in the uh, ore shoes where we have high infiltration rates, a much higher um, fluid rock ratios between 30 and 60. And outside of them, we have low rate, uh, water rock ratios. Same thing in the eastern part where there's little uh, mineralization. Now, if we look at this model and we look at it in cross section and we look at the cross section in the southern part, why is this happening? Well, um, what we see here is that there is a 
zone along the Pichet, which is about 70 meters. And on both sides of it, we have the Temiskaming sediments, which have a higher porosity than the uh, volcanic rock of the Blake River. So we can see that because of the permeability along the Pichet that is higher than in the sedimentary rocks, all the flow goes into the higher permeability panel of Pichet. Uh, that explains why we have the big um, 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 flow and the higher delta 18O values. Now, if we um, compare this to what happens in the eastern part, what we have now in the, whoops, okay, sorry. So, so in this area, I forgot, we have Mg carbonate, Mg tourmaline. We have the same protolith all the way, and uh, it's also in the Timiskaming. As we move east, now we go, sorry. Um, the, uh, in this part, the uh, Timiskaming is in contact with the Blake River, and the Pichet is half the thickness it is in the western segment. So what's happening here is that we have less infiltration in the plain of the Pichet because it's thinner, and we have more contribution from the uh, volcanic rocks because they have a higher permeability, fracture permeability, like most hard crystalline volcanic rocks. And we have a, this, this increased contribution, we think, from upper crustal fluids derived from the Blake River, explains the calcic iron, uh, calcic carbonate, iron, tourmaline characteristics in this area, despite having the same Piché group protolith in which the fluid flow is happening. And this is because of the contact with the Blake River. So to summarize this, uh, the model we have is that uh, we have high structural pa um, or areas that have higher permeability, where we have high fluid rock ratios, which favored the higher infiltration of the higher temperature metamorphic fluid. We think this proves that this metamorphic fluid is actually carrying the gold. It's mixing with this upper crustal fluid, which is residing either in the Temiskaming or the Blake River Temiskaming, which impart the change in composition of some of the vein minerals. Um, and the contribution from the um, Blake River rocks fluids in the uh, Bouzan area segment explain the increase in calcium iron in the carbonates and tourmaline in contrast to those that are hosted by uh, the uh, Timiskaming in the uh, zones of higher mineralization. This narrow panel, lack of structural corridors, more infiltration of uh, crustal fluids from the Blake River because of its permeability explain the difference in composition and uh, fluid rock ratios. And then it means also that we have here frozen the infiltration front of that deep-seated uh, metamorphic fluid. Okay, so how does that fit briefly with the, um, uh, the uh, regional context? So this is the variation of the oxygenized stoke composition of quartz from Valdor to Kirken Lake. Uh, so over the length of the Larder Lake Cadillac break, or almost all of it. Um, so the Norenda or the Ogmito Buzan segment is located here. And you can see that from west of Malartic all the way to Kirken Lake, and there's a little bit of thing we have to fiddle with the colors here, but we have the same sort of hydrothermal fluid with fairly higher delta, del delta 18 O values than in the Valdor area where the values are slightly lower. And you can see that both uh, overlap in the region of Malartic, which happens to be where there is a change in the strike of the uh, default and where one of the largest gold deposits of the area is. Um, so uh, I think there is two fluid reservoirs that are tapped along the Kazakh Lauder Lake break. They are slightly different. Um, and um, they are uh, uh, using these fluids that are causing the gold mineralization. But then at the local scale, the process is the infiltration that brings the metamorphic fluid with the gold towards the surface. If we compare this uh, along the uh, Lauder Lake Kazakh, we can see the same thing. So west of uh, Malartic, from Valdor to Malartic, we have a slightly lower 
delta 18 O values for the mixing the fluids that define the two metamorphic reservoir that I was mentioning before and towards the uh, uh, west of Malartic to Kirkland Lake we have higher delta 18 O values uh, so we have two slightly different metamorphic fluid reservoir that mix with what is more like a common upper crustal reservoir or if there are two we cannot distinguish them and likewise we have this for the high temperature low delta D metamorphic fluid mixing with the lower temperature high delta D upper crustal fluid at the scale of the uh, of the uh, Kedilek uh, Lauder Lake uh, fall zone um, so uh, in the cartoon way uh, we have the Lauder Lake Kedilek break we have two different reservoir the switch occurs somewhere where it changed strike and from uh, Malartic all the way to Kirkland Lake we have like similar compositions suggesting different reservoirs and I will not go today in the um, difference in these reservoirs but let's say they're just uh, slightly different so um, let's now uh, so the, this this uh, information uh, for example we've uh, the study of uh, Herzog here has shown that in the Valdor camp the source of sulfur uh, is a has a characteristic slightly negative capillary tree composition which is different from what's been obtained at Canadian Malartic by health, which is slightly positive. So we want to know, along the trace of the uh, Lauder Lake Kazilag break, if we can um, obtain, well, we will obtain uh, uh, sulfur isotope composition to determine if they are like those at Canadian Malartic, and we'll be able to integrate that with the work you've seen this morning from the gold fluid window where the composition of malartic rocks has been studied in detail as a potential source for uh, these, uh, these uh, fluids. Uh, we'll also uh, attempt to date the uh, age of gold mineralization using gold-related phosphate minerals uh, in the, um, in the uh, setting. So this will be done by uh, Shane, Weir, Shane Webb, who's finishing his PhD at Leeds and that will be uh, in Canada in the early uh, beginning of the summer. Um, now, what you can see here in gray are um, literature data in color is metal earth stable isotope data along the Larder Lake, because like break all the way to uh, Matachuan. And what you can see is that here the porcupine destor, despite being another usually endowed gold shear zone has very little data historically. So uh, uh, Shafak Samnez will come from the University of Geneva to work on this to study the stabilized isotope composition of the fluids, the sulfur isotope composition of the, uh, the source of fluids, and try to date the various gold uh, events using uh, phosphates along the, uh, this, the porcupine distor uh, fault. And finally, um, we have a um, uh, Maxime Bertos from uh, Grenoble Alpes, who's just finished his PhD, that will uh, be using uh, microthermometry in pyrite. Um, so previous microthermometry has been acquired in quartz almost entirely, and one of the issues with this is that the quartz is typically recrystallized in uh, the uh, original gold veins. Um, so the pyrite, as you can see here, this pyrite from the triangle deposit, uh, you can see that the pyrite zoning is seen through infrared light. So pyrite is transparent to infrared light. We can see that the pyrite is cracked, but the zoning is preserved, which proves that this pyrite has not been recrystallized. So if we find fluid inclusions within this pyrite, then we will be able to look at composition of fluids during different growth zones and the association with growth zones that would contain, for example, inclusions of gold and we'll try to look at determining the pressure temperature composition of these fluids that would be more directly associated with the gold than those in the quartz and what uh, literature tells us is that uh, in a perthermal system there's a significant difference between the composition of fluids that are in the gang minerals compared to that in the sulfide minerals. So in our guide, for example, is transparent, has been studied, and there are differences of fluid composition that relate more directly to the precipitation of the mineralization. Okay, thank you.